This is a conversation with Hexie Mefford for the Kentucky Marriage Equality and Religious Liberty Oral History Project. We are in the studio room of Breckenridge Hall on Moorhead State's campus, located in Rowan County, Kentucky. It is June 30th at 2.30 p.m. My name is Dakota Barr. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'd like to start with some biographical information, such as where you were born and where you grew up. I was born uh, in Georgia, and I actually was born on Fort Stewart Army Base. I'm an Army brat. Uh, although I uh, lived around Savannah because mom didn't like living on the Army Base. Uh, and um, we uh, moved away from there when I was about two when my mom divorced my dad. And uh, she drug us back up to Kentucky. Tucky. Well, I think for yeah. You know, well, first she went up to uh, Indiana for a little while, cause that's where my grandparents lived, and then she drove us back down to Kentucky. And so we, I grew up a little bit of everywhere, and uh, lived in Mount Sterling for a lot of years, and uh, then um, let's see when. Uh, she divorced her second husband. Uh, we moved into Mount Sterling. I was about uh, 15. And then, um, quite frankly, as soon as I could and was old enough, I was trying to get out of here. <laughs> trying to get out of Kentucky because it just doesn't really, uh, it's not exactly the most friendly of places for folks like me. I am hardcore pagan, you know, and. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's been kind of here and there and everywhere, you know, but always end up getting dragged back to Moorhead for whatever reason. I don't know why. Just shit happens, life goes on. You know, I don't know really what else to say about that at this point. So can you tell me about your religious upbringing or ideological background? Oh, I was raised in Christianity. Drug to church every Sunday. Twice every Sunday. Sometimes Wednesdays unless I just, you know, said I got homework, I can't go. It was something like that, you know, after, at least after I got older. Um, and I learned to loathe it. I loathe it to this very day because it has never been, you know, from the perspective and the things I've seen and the, what I had to grow up with, uh, it, um, it, it, it was just extraordinarily unpleasant, you know, and most of the most unpleasant, nastiest people I've ever met are Christ Christians. You know, and um, I just, you know, I, you know, it, it's, um, I was drawn to paganism at an early age. And, uh, you know, and I had trouble with it. I had trouble with the church people trying to, uh, I don't know, what they call the deliverance, which is, I think, the Protestant form of a exorcism, you know, and because I just absolutely refused to get with their program, you know, and uh, to this day, that has become a, that is a, um, source of contention with the uh, me and most of my immediate family. You know, uh, I do not have a close relationship with any of them except for a couple of nieces. And uh, that, uh, you know, my dad's been dead for a long time. My dad died years ago, you know. And uh, he, uh, you know, and, and it's, and the guy my mom married was not a pleasant person. You know, he didn't treat us very well. And, uh, you know, mom just kept staying there because, well, God hates divorce. I'm like, <laughs> you know. So I, I just, you know, I, I don't like, I don't like organized religion at all. And, you know, and I really do not like the way, I mean, last summer was 
prime evidence of why I don't like these people, why I don't like this religion. And because they were they were nasty, they were filthy, they were aggressive, they were cruel. And as far as I can tell, this Jesus, if he ever existed at all, uh, would have had nothing to do with them. And um, I just absolutely, I detest it. I'm sorry. Everything from that, you know, Randy Smith was the, one of the biggest ringleaders out there last summer. And there was one point where my husband and a, another person uh, who was out there with us when we were chanting, when they were there, when that, uh, that other county clerk, Casey D. Davis, yeah, supposedly come running into town. He didn't. His bike was on the back of a truck. We watched them pull up. Watched him take that back down. Then act like he'd just been pedaling for hundreds of miles. You know. And up in that group. And we were chanting. And here comes this whole group at us. They were heading right for us. And they were not going to be nice when they got to us. Then they noticed the... Uh, media out there you know several uh tv stations and the cameras on them and they just veered off like the you know veered off and around and like like they were going just going around the building but it was pretty clear they weren't you know and i mean they were extraordinarily aggressive why while our side was anything but and it's you know they're vile people you know, if there are actual real Christians out there, I don't know any. You know, and I'm not sure there is such a thing. You know, and then without just getting really coarse about it, that's probably pretty much all I can say about it. So, you know, I don't know what else you want to know, <laughs> except I really don't like them. How did you first become involved in the religious liberty, or the marriage equality movement? Okay, well, we were with my mother, believe it or not, and we had just come from the grocery store, and we drove by this group of people we saw out there holding up signs, and I waved at them. I had no idea what was going on. This was the first I'd known anything about it. And I waved at them, and she just threw a fit. You know, I am 47 years old, and this woman told me, don't you dare wave at them people. Don't you ever wave at them people. And I said, excuse the fuck out of me. I am 47 years old. I will wave at who I want. And that's when I found out it was, uh, you know, the group was out, you know, this was, uh, they were protesting Kim Davis, you know, just completely not doing her job, no, will not issue marriage license to anybody, you know, and discriminating against the very people who are paying her salary, you know, and that just flew all over me, especially, I'm like, oh no, not in my town, if I gotta live here, this is not gonna happen, and so I, felt, I got online, first, I had avoided social media, you know, for years, but I realized I'm gonna have to get a go on and find out where this is at, what's going on, and I end up having to get a Facebook account. So and that's how I met all the people that we know today, you know. And, um, you know, and we started going out there, and we were out there every single day, you know. Mary Hargis, Doug, me, and Rachel Bombie, we were out there every single day. Others would come out on the, they would take their lunch breaks. Instead of going and eating lunch, they would come out there and stand with us for as long as they could. And then they would, and then others would come out um, when the college came back in. More of them started, you know, more folks there started coming out. And, uh, you know, and, and it's just appalling that, that this would happen. You know, this is the 21st century, but this town is like, you know, trying to drag it into the 20th century at this point. And, you know, it's just reprehensible. You know, because I'm like, people are people. You don't choose who you love. You don't choose what sex you're drawn to. You know, it's not a lifestyle. It's just what it is. You know, people, and, um, you know, I didn't choose to be bi. I just happen to like girls as well as I do guys, you know. And this happens my soulmate is in the male body, 
Otherwise, you know, if it had been a female body, it had been all the same. I mean, I'd been, you know, disowned by my family, but I don't really care, you know, because that's, I don't really, <laughs> we don't, we're not exactly all chummy anyway. And, uh, you know, and this has been, this has been um, a very eye-opening experience because I had avoided the politics for most of my life because it's just such a nasty game. Okay, it's dirty. The people in it who are dirty, they're all in it just for their own self gain. And they don't care about their constituents. They don't care about the country. They don't care about the state. They don't care about the people. And um, the more I got into it, the more I realized there's, it did nothing to change my opinion of that. And, um, you know, and uh, I wanted to make a difference. Still want to make a difference. Uh, you know, I really wished the judge and the senators in Frankfurt had done their job and impeached her because she should have been impeached. But Bunning pissed out the state, you know, our state representatives down there in um, Frankfurt just ended up. Uh, awarding her for rewarding her for uh, breaking the law and because of that one action because of her actions it has spread all across this country and um, if you'll excuse the term crispies because that's what I refer to them as you know they just you know, I mean they've just gone apeshit ever since They've, I mean, they've gotten nastier. They've gotten more vicious, more violent, and more aggressive on on every front because this emboldened them. And because of that, you know, this fight is not over. I don't know if it's ever going to be over because I don't, you know. <laughs> this country has gone down the shitter because nobody really wants to keep their oaths. And I don't deal with um, betrayal and traitors very well. There used to, you know, used to be traitors were shot for betraying their country, betraying their people. Uh, apparently, that's not so much the case anymore. And, um,. Uh, you know, and I, I have absolutely no faith in politics. I have absolutely no faith in any of the politicians that go into this because I do think they still, you know, for the majority, if there are any good ones out there, they're not going to have a chance of a snowball in hell of getting anywhere because the, the, the establishment isn't going to let that happen. You know, the people of this country, there's more of us than there are of them, but the people of this country have gotten lazy. They won't fight back. You know, you need to take a cue from France and some of these other places over there. Fight back. Rise up. Make your voice heard. Do something. Those don't sit on your ass behind the computer. You know, and just make little comments on Facebook. Do something. You know, you know, even you know, every little step for change, for good change, you know, at least it's a step. You know, you got to fight, but you know, and yeah, you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get fed up. You know, people don't fight because egos get in the way. But you know, just set aside your own ego, set aside your own. <sighs> desires or whatever and, and just, you know, go at this in the way to make a good change for this country, for this state, for the people. Just, you know, instead of just saying, well, I've got to work, I've got kids, I've got to do this, i got to be careful. But, you know, if you sit on your ass and do nothing now, your kids ain't going to have a future. And they just, you know, it that's that's why I got involved because I gave a shit you know I wish more people would so there 
obviously this issue arose after the Supreme Court uh, made marriage equality the law of the land. Yeah. So can you walk me through how you felt when you first heard the decision? I was thrilled. I was thrilled because we've had gay friends over the course of many, many years. Dunn and I have been married over 20 years now. And over that 20 years and even before we ever got together, we both had gay friends and really hated seeing the way they would get treated. Because if one got sick and was in the hospital, that, that one's family might come in there and would not allow this person's loved one, their partner, their mate to come in and be there because it was an embarrassment to them. And it disgusted me. And um, that, you know, my friends would get treated like this, you know. Uh, you know, I, I grew up with a friend who was born intersexed, you know, it was both. And um, she was more female than male. So, you know, and, uh, you know, that got corrected. But the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, I've, I've never had an issue with it. Because I figure there is, <sighs> the world needs more love. And who am I to deny it to anybody who's found it? Who is anybody to deny that? to anyone who has found it. It's in short enough supply in this world. So, you know, you know, why, why, why diss that? It's just, it, it just, you know, I was, I was, I was so happy. I mean, I practically danced a jig at the house. And that's no kidding. And, um, and then, the crap uptown started. I mean, I would have expected this in a place like, say, Elliott County or uh, Paintsville, you know, Podunk, Shitville, nowhere. And but no, here, here, you know, and the probably what is the most progressive town in eastern Kentucky, you know, and. You know, and now Kentucky, and you know, I mean, Kentucky has always had a bad rep in this country. Now, in parts of the world who never even heard of Kentucky, much less Round County, Kentucky, thinks that you know they have a really, really bad view of us. And it's all because of this idiot downtown sitting in the county courthouse as a county clerk. You know, we didn't vote for her because I have always had a staunch uh, stance against ever putting anybody with religious people. I, I mean, I'd rather have nothing but atheists than to have religious people like that sitting in uh, positions of political power because it's not good. Separation of church and state and that's been anything but for the last year. And um, when I really thought that when the Supreme Court made that decision, and <sighs> silly me thought that, wow, maybe we're finally making progress as a country. Maybe we're making, you know, and <sighs> I really did not expect the shit storm that ensued. I really did not. And I was extraordinarily upset with 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 how it went. I mean, it just exploded and the Supreme Court, I mean, it seemed like they didn't really do anything about it, but now it seems like they're finally coming around and just striking down all these unconstitutional laws that all these red states are trying to make, you know. I mean, vicious, nasty stuff and, and I mean, just thumbing their nose at the Supreme Court, thumbing their nose at the law of the land, you know, and it's, I mean, I'm just, I was just gobsmacked because I couldn't, I was just like, 
wow, really? And, you know, and I'm like, this is the Supreme Court. They interpret the law of the land, and you people are basically telling them to go fuck themselves. Wow, just really wow. And I, I couldn't believe it. I really could not believe it because, I mean, dude, seriously? I mean, if the, any of the rest of us had pulled the kind of crap she's done and some of these others have done, we'd been sitting in jail for, we've been rotting in jail still, you know. But all because it was religious, all because it was based on religion, they're wanting to tiptoe around it, you know. They're wanting to, you know, oh, well, we got to handle this with kid gloves because, well, it's all about religion, you know. We don't want to offend all these religious people. <laughs> You know, I'm, I have no problem offending them personally. I really don't. I don't care because I'm fed up, you know, up to here with it. And um, I just, I, frankly, I want, it to, I want this shit to be done. I want to go away. I want these people to get a life and, I don't know, go somewhere else, you know, and, and let the rest of us sane people get on with things but you know I am concerned with the way you know right now with the Supreme Court I mean that I think it's Thomas Clarence Thomas yes I think he's fixing to resign because things ain't going his way and some of the others but I also understand that um, with the upcoming presidential election and the flat-out refusal due to, you know, our senators' bigoted ways, uh, you know, they're, they're not wanting to accept uh, President Obama's, you know, anything, anybody he's going to want to appoint, nothing of that sort. And because they don't want liberals in there. They want people like them in there. And, so, you know, and uh, I wish we had more Ruth... Bader Ginsburg's in there. I really do. I wish we had a whole row of them sitting there because she is an awesome lady. I, you know, she is a tough little woman. And she is, you know, I just respect the hell out of her. And, um, you know, so I, I really hope the Supreme Court at this point continues to stand by their decision and to uh, push for the equality and for uh, striking down these constitutional laws and um, you know and, and pushing for laws that are going to protect the LGBT community you know I think I know there's more letters added to that alphabet suit but I, you know it's easier for me to just stick with the four and um, you know and, and that that as time progresses that People will see reason. I mean, <laughs> I don't really expect religious people to see reason because Crispies just aren't really are not good at that. If they were, they wouldn't believe in that book. Simple as that. Um, but you know, I, I really hope that as, as time does progress, that this next generation coming up. Unfortunately, many of them are being taught the same bigoted ideas and attitudes as time goes on but I do know they can as I grow up that some of them can learn to make their own decisions I did because I was raised in an extremely bigoted household I really was um, gay people were evil uh, you didn't whites and blacks didn't mix um, you know uh, you stuck with your own kind uh, stuff like that, you know. You weren't, you didn't be friends. You know, it was, you know. I heard a lot. Well, it's okay to be friends with black people, but you don't mix with them. I'm like, really? And uh, you know, and, I, and the vitriol I heard about gay people was just, oh my god, I can't even begin to. I, I just probably will not go there because it, it was vile. It really was. And it turns out, you know, the irony of that is it turns out the first guy I ever dated was actually a gay fellow. 
at that point, I didn't even know gay people existed. I was young, dumb, very, uh, you know, one of these kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, kind of, so, what? Yeah, I was naive, but it's the kind of upbringing you get when you don't really know what's going on in the world because you don't learn because your parents don't teach you. You know, and um, they, um, but yeah, I was really naive. I had no idea because he was terrified to tell anybody he was gay. You know, like so many folks back then. This is back in the late 70s, early 80s, thereabouts. You know, and um, I really wish my friend had uh, felt safe enough to tell me. You know, and I wished we had kept in touch because I found out that back in the early 90s, at the age of 33, my friend died of AIDS. And I, cause all at once, nothing first, he and his family just disappeared from Mount Sterling, Kentucky, where I met him. And, um, Believe it or not, met him in church because his family was dragging him off to church all the time, too. And, um, you know, and I found out that they had been run out of town because, and this was by the very church people who were supposed to have been there for them and cared for them, but they ran them out of town. They firebombed their house, they didn't have much choice. You know, they got death threats and everything to the point they, they did. And, you know, and my friend, you know, I guess sort of after all of that just kind of went to the other extreme and just didn't really care what he'd done. Um, and, he, you know, he got into, you know, the club scene doing a lot of drugs and stuff like that and um and, and contracted hiv as a result and you know and i really hate it when people say well that's just god's punishment for people being gay you know i'm like really you know how about all these little kids who contracted through uh who have contracted it through being born to mothers who caught it from uh, blood transfusion or something, you know? Were they gay? Or what about women who caught it from their husbands going out and, you know, they were shooting up, doing drugs, dirty needles, stuff like that, shared it around. Or they went out, you know, uh, you know, and, and basically cheated on them with somebody who had it, you know? That's not the case. It's you know, and the thing I have learned over this past year is everybody is a bigot in their own way, in one form or fashion. Whether, you know, it's because, you know, I myself am extraordinarily bigoted against organized religion. I hate it with a passion, you know, and with good reason. I'm sure everybody has their reasons. And with the Supreme Court making this ruling, it came out. Boy, did it ever. And, um, and with Donald Trump spewing his vitriol, the, uh, the haters and the bigots really came out of the woodwork. Really, really came out of the woodwork. And I, and if, like I said, you know, everybody wants to say, Oh, don't be a hater, but everybody hates. Sooner or later, everybody hates. And I have learned a lot about myself over this past year as a result of this. And I've matured a lot, at least I hope so, over the last year, over this. And um, made a lot of good friends. Lost a lot of good friends, too. And it's... Um, you know, but all in all, I'm glad the Supreme Court made that decision. And I hope they continue to make good decisions like that.
So you mentioned that you were active in the protests. Oh, yeah. Would you have called yourself an activist before this? Pardon me? Would you have called yourself an activist before these events? No, I wouldn't have. Um, I didn't really know anybody in this town. All the people that we used to know years ago before we moved back up here from Athens, Georgia, uh, had pretty much either died or moved off. We didn't know anybody in this town. Uh, and no, I was not active in pretty much anything like that. Um, like I said, I had spent most of my life avoiding anything to do with politics. I don't, <laughs> because, uh, well, just to put it plainly, it was just easier not to get involved. And because it takes a lot out of you when you do. It takes a lot. Uh, it takes a toll on you emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And um, but I have realized I can't sit on my ass and do nothing anymore. I have to. I have to do something. You know. And with the advent of me losing my hearing and going deaf about seven years ago, I have been more and more into pushing for. Uh, equality, you know, uh, inclusiveness of the deaf community because, by and large, I don't, you know, with very few exceptions in this country, uh, most places absolutely do nothing to include the deaf. You know, uh, you know, hell, I'm not sure they do that much for including anybody with disabilities. But some, you know, some things are a little bit more inclusive than others. Uh, and with the, you know, advent of the big shit show that exploded last summer, you know, there, there's just no way I cannot get involved anymore. I have to, you know, and yes, it's taken, it's taken a toll, you know, everything from, uh, insomnia to, to just, really bad dreams, nightmares, which hence comes to insomnia, you know, cause of the insomnia, cause you just really don't want to sleep when that happens. You know, and, and it's, 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 uh, it's been hard at times. But I can't imagine it could be possibly any harder on me than it can be all the LGBT couples that have been in this mess. You know, and, uh, the Orlando thing was just a should have been a wake up call. I don't know if it was or not. <laughs> and uh cuz and frankly I am highly concerned about such things happening here in this town because, you know, when I mean, you got Redneck Krispies just hell bent on not, uh, you know, on, on, on hating, you know, uh, folks who are just trying to live their life like anybody else, but they just happen to not be like, you know, them or the way they think they ought to be, then, uh, they, um, you know, I, I'm. Well, it, 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 there's a great deal of concern there. I don't want to see, you know, uh, a bunch of my friends, you know, getting killed for just being them. You know, and, uh, you know, people think, oh, well, it can't happen here. I'm like, <laughs> really? And uh, I'm like, you know, this was Florida. Okay? I mean, jeez. You know, it, it, it's, it's, I've been to Florida and they can keep it. Um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, you would think it was probably one of the more progressive places on this planet, or at least in this country. And, you know, and this dude walks in and he just guns people down. And it wasn't for, and it wasn't even over religious issues. 
You know, as the stuff and the story developed, this guy was just a self-hating gay man. You know, and who's to say that that's not going to happen because a lot of these people in these churches are closeted, severely closeted, severely self-hating. You know, people, you know, one of my favorite people on this planet is Leslie Jordan. You know, and I watched his movie, uh, My Trip Down the Pink Carpet. I think it's what it's called. And he was basically giving his story of what it has taken for him to accept himself. Because he is from Tennessee. And, you know, and, and, it, and it hurts to see that so many people, simply due to religious upbringing and fear of losing their family and their life and, you know, and everything are afraid, you know, are just so eat up with self-loathing that, you know, they just take it out on people like them. People who haven't, who, who have learned to not hate themselves, to be happy with who they are and, you know, and their sexuality. I don't understand why the hate. I've, I've never understood it. Um, I just, I never will, you know. I mean, I understand why I have an intense dislike for organized religion because as far as I can tell, it's never done anything good. It has been, if anything, it has destroyed everything it's ever touched, every person it's ever touched. And I would really like to see that change, you know. So that's why I've become active, an activist, you know. Much to my mother's chagrin, believe that. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. She found out that we were sort of, you know, two of the people who helped organize the... Uh, the big uh, rally last summer out on the court, out on the you know, courthouse lawn. There, she was apparently extremely upset. I mean, apparently she was so upset she just she just she couldn't even talk, and that's saying something, believe me. And um, I think, as my niece has told me, it was just a, they were in the car. And they were going down the road, and she would just go, just bang the steering wheel like this, going, oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe them. I can't believe they do this. And then she just grumbles, start driving again, and then she'd slap that wheel again, saying the same thing. I mean, that was pretty much about the extent of it. I mean, she just was so angry about it, you know, and she has... I have made sure to make sure she is as distant, as far from this as she would like to be, you know, and, um, you know, uh, I'm not really sure what she tells people anymore because, oh, my, my, where we get, we're on the news so much last summer, uh, you know, coming out of the broom closet, as it were. You know, I mean, it's not like I've ever made an effort to actually, you know, hide that. But uh, I don't go screaming it from the rooftops either. Because in this area, there are far too many people who would still just love to see the burning times come back. You know, so I'm quite familiar with discrimination. I'm quite familiar with... Uh, persecution and you know just as much as anybody in the gay community really uh, I do not believe my family knows I am bi simply because that's just that would just be too much for them to deal with my kids don't even know that you know so uh, you know it, it's all these reasons it just goes on and on and on as to why I have become an activist now, I wasn't before, but I definitely am now. So, you know, pretty much all I can say on that part of it. 
<laughs> How would you classify the environment at the protest? Did you feel safe or unsafe? Um, well, when I first started, um, I didn't have any problems with feeling safe, but that changed. That changed as it went along because there was this one particular dude who was a biker, and apparently a veteran, and he would be carrying one of them filthy Christian flags. Absolutely hated I was out there. I was, uh, I had the pride flag. I was waving it, and he just absolutely, I mean, he came at me. He was snarling, demanded I put that down. I quit waving it. I quit holding it up because it was an offense to him as a veteran. And because, you know, it had the blue field with the stars in it, but it had, you know, the rainbow stripes. And, um, you know, and they got more aggressive after that. I mean, they kept getting more aggressive, so no. But him and his buddies, at one point, I was told to stay home because there was two of these bikers that come the very next day after that little uh, brouhaha, and uh, they had guns on their bikes. You know, in, you know, down in the holders they have on the side of them, apparently. Rifles, you know, like shotguns. And I was told to stay home because they sit out there. I was told that they were out there. They were watching. They were looking. They were scanning the crowd, scanning our crowd. And that was very sobering because... I've never actually had to think about somebody actually gunning for my ass over this. And I was like, okay. So I was, I, 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 I stayed home uh, for a couple of days after that. And then when I was back out there, I had the pride flag again. And he was right there over on his side, and he was trying to stare me down. And I just stared him right back. Because I don't do bullies. You know, they want to try that shit. You don't try that with me. I, I went through bullying growing up. Never again. And uh, because when he came at me over that flag, the, that one day, the first when he started this, um, it had a nice little shot pointed in on the stick. And he was coming at me, and I didn't even think about it. I just you know, plant my feet and raise that thing up and if he had come at me I would have stuck him with it. And um, I hadn't even realized it but Doug come up on one side of me and Lisa Williams up on the other one because Lisa's like, oh shit, she's going to kill him. You know, but I just, you know, I may not look like much, just this little short, round, woman, you know, that doesn't, you know, looks probably, you know, pretty average, I guess, but I don't take bullshit from nobody, and because I grew up being anxiety-ridden, fearful, terror, you know, just, just constantly terrified on a daily basis because I was in a very abusive environment growing up. And it took me some years after I was an adult to get past that. But, you know, once I learned to love myself and found that strength, never again. You know, you want to you, you wanna try to bully me? Bring it on. You know, because uh, I, I, I was, I'm like, bring it on, asshole. Because I, I, I was, you know, I was angry. You know, I am, anybody you will talk to will probably tell you that I am an angry little person. I really am. Um, you know, I, I've had this, this little seething bat of rage <laughs> for most of my life. I know most of the time is just, I just keep it on the simmer. But, you know, the last year there's been a whole lot of stuff that's brought it up brought it out, you know, a lot of that um, rage just against the injustice and, and, and st stupidity. God, I hate stupidity. You know, I can forgive ignorance.
I can I can forgive a lot of shit actually, but I cannot forgive stupidity. You know, and unfortunately, the stupid has really come, you know, floating to the top. And uh, with this whole mess, and uh, it's been it's it's been crazy. You know, and yeah, for the first time ever in my life last summer, I felt threatened by the 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 ensuing you know the these religious people just 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 really pushing out there, you know, especially Randy Smith. I don't think I've ever met a more vile, hateful, evil person in my life you know and I can tell you up in Ashland there was plenty of them he was one of them and man there was a shitload of them out there and um, actually some of them tried to get physical physically aggressive and um, you know and, and before I will let somebody hurt me or mine yeah, I'll, I'll pick up an equalizer. I don't care. You know, because don't threaten me. Don't threaten my hubby. Don't threaten anybody I care about. You know, because, you know, yeah, it was dangerous. It, it got dangerous. It got, it got so dangerous, cops were out there. A lot of them didn't want to be. I can tell you that now. A lot of them were Kimmy supporters. City cops. I don't know about the state boys, but a lot of them, the, the city cops were. And uh, they did not want to have to be out there protecting us. But the thing was, is the reason they were out there was because uh, several of the religious folks on the other, on their side, they were carrying guns. In fact, they even walked right into the courthouse with them. We watched them do it. You know, cops did nothing to prevent this. It was, you know, you have open carry law out on the um, lawn. It's fine, but you're not supposed to take that shit to the courthouse. And they did, and they did nothing to stop them. But if any of our side had done that, and nobody had guns, nobody, nobody, nobody were carrying firearms of any sort. And, uh, but if we had tried walking in there with a firearm, I guarantee you, we would have been arrested in a heartbeat. I would bet money I don't have on it. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I, th I think that pretty much answers your question. Yeah, I, I did feel like at some point my life was in danger. I felt like all of our lives were in danger at some point. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> I want to go back for a minute okay. and talk about the Round County Court, Kim Davis. Do you believe that she best represented the cause of religious liberty? She best represented what? The cause of religious liberty. No, absolutely not. I'm sorry, they've had liberty from the time, from the inception of this filthy religion. Okay, they've never not had any freedom. In fact, they have been given special favors for way too long, in my opinion. So, no, I mean, there is, you know, religious rights. They've never not had them. Okay? Um, the only time the Protestants didn't have any religious right was back in England in the bad old days. You know, uh, when, uh, I think it was Mary, Bloody Mary, I think they called her. She was Queen of England. Uh, she was staunch Catholic, and she had Protestants burned. They had no freedom then. They've got all the freedom they freaking want now, and then some. And they ought to remember where they came from. Their religion is only about 600 years old. Okay, Protestantism, 600 years old. Catholicism, give or take a few years, about 1900. You know, Islam, about 1600 years. Uh, you know, these Abrahamic religions suck. So, no, she does not best represent anything other than her own bigoted views. And, well, I guess the views of all bigots everywhere like that. That's pretty much what she represents, at least in my opinion. You know, and, um, 
I, I personally think that um, at this point in, in, in history that the church needs to be taken down many, 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 many pegs and put in its place and start by taxing the fuck out of them. Because I, because, you know, they, that's how they've gained their foothold and their power in politics. It's because they have been let go for all their life, you know, all the, all the life of this freaking religion. They have had, they've not had to pay anything they, in uh, tax-wise. They are extremely wealthy. Um... And, uh, you know, and they really don't do any good, as far as I can tell, for anybody. The only ones that are, you know, the only ones are doing any good for is themselves. You know, it is a business. And it needs to be taxed like a business. And, because I guarantee you, if they did that, suddenly uh, religion would become a lot less lucrative and a lot of people would quit being preachers. And they, a lot of people would probably quit following it too you know cause you know no she st what she did was start a war she started a war another fucking civil war but based on but it's a religious one this time you know it's not and, and, it, and it's all about them it's not about their rights. It's all about them being able to tell everybody else how to live. That's all it's about. And you know, and I, I'm, <laughs> I am really done with that crap. I am. I, I just really want them to uh, you know, I, I just, I, I just I want her out of there. I want her. I want her. My biggest freaking desire for Kim Davis is to be impeached and taken down so many freaking pegs that all she is remembered as a, is a shitty little footnote in history of this county. You know. Do you believe she deserved to be imprisoned? Oh yeah, I think she should still be sitting there. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, she could rot there because, you know, but uh, the sodomy wagon showed up in Bunnings front porch, as it were, excuse me, you know, out on his lawn and he caved. He caved in. You know, he caved in from his original ruling. He pissed out because I am pretty certain that he lives in a very high-end neighborhood and I'm pretty sure uh, neither his uh, family nor his uh, neighbors were too happy about that and they wanted them gone. So I say he was put on under a great deal of pressure to get rid of them by his neighborhood, probably by his family as well. And, uh, you know... And therein lies a huge amount of disappointment with this whole thing because, you know, I'm sorry. I know people saying love won. No, it didn't. You know, or if it had won, we wouldn't still be fighting this war. <laughs> Simple as that. You know, people, you know, I know they want to believe that. I know, wanna, I know they want to hang on to that. But, you know, and the only, you know, I will only say that when, and only when, this war is done. This fight is done. You know, and people, irregardless of their sexuality or anything else, are treated like human beings. They have the rights and the same protections as anybody else. You know, uh, when... We as a society can wake up and quit treating women like property. Quit treating, well, just quit treating each other like things. You know, you don't treat any living creature as a thing. They're not things, they're living beings. And uh, as far as I can tell, the religious community has done 
nothing but treat anything outside of themselves like things and even each other because I have watched this when I was growing up I watched them somebody in their congregation something happened they didn't do what they ought to do they were the first ones to kick them when they was down you know and so until Kim Davis is gone out of there um and does not have the celebrity that she has been enjoying for the past year and a half. Well, no, I guess it's just a year now, huh? About the past year. Uh, you know, and she just she quits getting rewarded. And um, for breaking the law. You know, nobody's won. So far at this point in the juncture, the only ones that seem to have been winning are the religious people. You know, because like I said, <laughs> if they had done their jobs back a year ago and impeached her, forced her out, and let one of the other clerks, particularly Brian is the one I'm thinking of, uh, take over those roles until the next election, then um, then we would have won. We would have won. And this shit show still wouldn't be going on. You know, they should have they should have uh, enforced the law, and they did not because they were afraid of the religious community and when your representatives your senators your governors your whatever can you know when they don't stand up to bullies like that then it's just bad for everybody it's bad for it's you know they're not doing what is in the best interest of their constituents or the state, or anything, you know. So, oh, I, I, I wish she was still sitting there. I really do. Or actually, more, actually, more to the point, I really wish she was still not county clerk. I absolutely hate paying her salary. I hate that she is getting eighty grand a year just in salary, and plus all these really nice perks that puts her well up over a hundred grand at the very least. You know, she doesn't deserve that. She doesn't deserve to be uh, sitting there in that job because she is a an old, she is a liar and an oath breaker, Berloga. The term Verloga means oathbreaker, and uh, you know, and, and it's just that sent it sent out it sent out a bad message when she did what she did, and our state government uh, rewarded her for that, and um, they used taxpayer dollars to do it too, so. Uh, well, to, 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 yeah, she should still be sitting there rotting in a cell somewhere, in my opinion. Next. <laughs> Do you believe that this issue deserved the media attention it received? Come again? Do you believe that this issue deserved the media attention it received? Yeah, I do. I think it did. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that um, it was being largely ignored. The, you know, the protesters were being largely ignored. Uh, nobody cared. Nobody cared because, um, unfortunately, most of it was bad publicity for us. Because the rest of the country, I mean, I, I mean. Dude, even uh, Bill Maher. I mean, Mayall. I mean, it was it was scathing. 
as only Bill can be. Uh, with the uh, media attention that it received, I mean, it needed the media attention. This needed to go, this needed to get out there. It had to. I'm not really sure what alerted the media to us, though. I, I really don't know what brought that out. I don't entirely. Uh, but I'm glad it did because it needed the media attention it got. I just wished it had been more positive for Kentucky as a state because businesses don't want to come here, man. <laughs> they don't. They don't want to come here They because they don't want to come to a state that, that is just so backwards in the view of pretty much everybody. Uh, I mean, now even worldwide at this point. I mean, little podunk, you know, third world countries know about us now, and they don't like us. And, um, you know, it was, but I do think the attention that the, uh, the protesters, you know, the Brown County Rights Coalition, uh, particularly, you know, got, you know, it was largely positive because we tried to keep it positive. We tried so very hard to keep it positive. But it seems like the media isn't always keen on positive and happy. They want, you know, They, they they want that 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 I guess, I guess uh, you know aggressiveness and violence and hate and all that shit just seems to make for a better news story, you know. And a lot of it was focused, you know, a lot of the attention, especially when the religious folks started showing up, uh, a lot of it got focused on them, you know. A lot of it got focused on her, and. And, and it made a lot of, it did make the uh, more the liberal community here seem a little bit diminished though when it seemed like there were just so many people coming from all over different places to support her you know because I mean they were just coming I mean they were coming from as far away as wherever Westboro is you know, and I mean, they were coming from all over the country, all over the state, and that looked bad. That looked bad on us, media-wise, you know, but yeah, the media, it, it, it deserved the media attention it got. It was needed. It really was to show that not everybody here are, you know, inbred you know, uh, Billy Joe Bob asshole Hicks that, you know, that, uh, you know, have about as much education as a newborn. <laughs> you know, it, it's, um, it, it uh, but do I think that it improved the world's view on us? Nope. Or at least, you know, the country, but now the world has a really bad view, too. But, uh, you know, and I, that is something I would really like to see change. And I really wished that the media had done more in that respect for us. But, you know, it is what it is. And, um,. We got to know several of the folks that, you know, uh, that came down, you know, everything from, was it AP, Associated Press, and uh, all of the Lexington, and I guess it was the West Virginia one, and, uh, you know, and, uh, oh gosh, there was another one that was, I can't remember what it was, but it was one of the bigger ones, too. I mean, it, it was, um, you know, they, they uh, you know, they were good folks. They really was. They were, they, um, I, I, I think they did this. I mean, you know, the media is always going to put a spin on things because that's just the way they are. 
but you know I do think they did us fairly for the most part you know uh, like I said I do wish they had focused more on the positive instead of the negative but that's just the way it is you know would you call your efforts a victory <sighs> hmm I have mixed feelings on that I I cannot say that I think it was a victory at this point, no. Um, like I said earlier, if it had been a victory in Love One, we still wouldn't be doing this. We, and um, I think there were some good things that came out of it, you know, uh, like with, you know, I, uh, but no, I don't think it was a victory at this point. It, I wished I could say I thought it was, but um, I think you've known me long enough at this point. No, I don't sugarcoat anything, you know, and I'm going to be very, very blunt and honest. You know, I know a lot of people want to believe it has been a victory. Um, I think, you know, the, the, I know the couples can get, you know, anybody can get a marriage license now. But the thing was, the thing is, is that it had been so altered and it has been so <sighs> they catered to her and, and, and did exactly and they, and they made it to where uh, her signature was not required for these even though in any other state in this country as far as I know it is required for the county clerk's name to be on that paper to make it official so you know I, and at this point I'm like well if they're going to do this then why do we need county clerks at all you know why can't they just put this shit online and let people fill in the blanks and file it electronically you know, no, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and do away with the county clerk position altogether. Save the taxpayers some money. You know, that would have been a victory if they'd done it that way. You know, if they were going to do this, you know, but, you know, until they quit catering to the religious right, then, no, I can't say I think it was a victory at this point. You know, until people, irregardless, are treated like human beings, same rights as anybody else under the Constitution of this country. Um, probably then and only then will I say we finally have achieved a victory. Would you consider Rowan County to be closer together or further apart because of this? Oh, I think it's severely divided right now. Um, we're even divided within our own ranks at this point. So, too much fucking ego in the way. And so, oh yeah, it is severely divided. It has divided friends, families, uh, the community, severely. And I, I I don't know when that is going to ever be fixed. I, I really don't because this this has been hell, it's divided the country. It really has. It, it it's divided the country so badly that you got somebody like Donald frickin' Trump up there running for president, and he's actually the GOP nominee, which is just, oh, jeez, you know. So, yeah, it's been extremely divisive. You know, I really wished it wasn't, but it is. Would you consider the debate between religious liberty and marriage equality or LGBTQ plus equality 
in general to be over. Be over? Yeah. Oh, hell no. Not by a long shot. It's going to be a long time before this is over. It's going to be years. It's going to go longer than the civil rights stuff in the 60s. You know, because there has been a burning hatred for uh, gay folks for centuries. You know, especially in amongst the European folks. You know, it, it, it all comes back down to that fucking religion. Every time. Always, always, always. So, no, it's, it, it's not going to be over for a long, long time. You know. I, I wish, I really, really, really wish we as a species were a bit more mature and uh, a bit more reasonable but we're not we're still basically a fairly young species with too much ego you know individual ego in the way and I mean don't get me wrong, I like individuality because I definitely wouldn't want to be a freaking clone to anybody else, but, you know, and, and definitely, you know, I mean, I have been so staunch against the establishment as it is for so long at this point, you know, but it, it's... <sighs> there comes a point in time when individuality becomes a liability as well. And these people, you know, we as a species need to wake up and grow up because we're killing ourselves with our hate and our religious differences, our cultural differences, our, you know, and, and if we could just wake up and realize we're all human beings, we're all part of the human race. It doesn't matter about your skin color, your creed, your race, your, you know, sexual preferences or anything. It, none of that should freaking matter. As long as you're not hurting anybody or any, you know, any other living thing, you know, I'm, I'm just like, live and let live. Just, just don't. But we as a species have not achieved that. And I don't know if we will before we just kill ourselves. You know, just just hate ourselves right into extinction. You know, I mean, I know you've seen in a lot of my posts on Facebook, and you know I can be very gruff. <laughs> you know, I'm. I realize I'm extremely opinionated, but at least you know I do try to think about my opinions before I let my mouth run. You know, that doesn't always happen. And sometimes I say shit I really have to apologize for. But when I'm in the wrong, I got no problem with that. I will say, I am sorry, I am wrong. And I apologize and try to fix that, you know, fuck up that I've done. But not everybody is like that. And I wasn't always like that, you know. And I have said some pretty hateful shit. I know this. But I... I, I am an extremely passionate person, too. And um, as anybody who knows me will tell you, I am passionate, compassionate, caring, and loving, but I'm not nice. I will just tell it like it is. And a lot of people... Uh, view that as being me being a hateful person but you know I'm not a hateful person that much I can I will say you know I'm not a hateful person but I I don't sugarcoat anything I don't see any point in it and that's been a huge problem in this society people I have no problem, problem lying just to be nice, 
to keep from hurting somebody's feelings or whatever. Uh, and it's been my experience in my 47 years on this planet that nobody gave a shit about my feelings. They have any problem hurting them. So, you know, I learned. I learned to quit. Uh, I just had had enough of dishonesty in my life and grew up in it. You know, dishonesty, it was just par for course. It seems to be par for course in this society. Uh, it, I mean, it's par for course in politics, although they don't even try to hide it anymore. They used to at least try to pretend, and now they don't even do that. You know, so... I, I really hope at some point people can learn to work together and love each other irregardless of any personal differences in their egos you know but so until they can do that dude <laughs> this shit ain't never gonna go away uh, I don't know really what else to say about that I really just have one more question for you okay and I want to know as a person how have you changed because of this event? How have I changed? Um, I have matured in the way that I, you know, I've taken a lot longer, harder look at myself and my own thoughts and been working really hard to fix those because um, I'd be a little bit more tendency to keep my own counsel and uh, I don't uh, I wouldn't say I was the most trusting person in the world to start with, but I am less so now. I, 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 I was more, I had a tendency to at least, with people, to try to give them a lot of the time the benefit of the doubt. I don't do that so much anymore, you know. I... You know, I, I'm not as willing to open up in, in a lot of ways like I used to be because I, with all of this and, and the way this has divided the country, I, I have learned to be a hell of a lot more cautious because uh, it was a rude awakening to know that, you know, people want to kill you over this. It was an extremely rude awakening. So I have become a lot, uh, you know, I was always kind of cynical, but I've become a lot more cynical since all of this started. Um, and I, I don't know if that's really a good thing, because, uh, you know, but, you know, <laughs> I have gotten really a lot more scathing with the cynical sarcasm. And, um,. Uh, probably also I, I have changed as a person the fact that I realize I cannot just pretend nothing's happening anymore. I can't just stick my head up my ass and pretend like nothing's going on around me. You know, I can't just you know, you know, it's all, you know, it's not rainbows and glitter. I mean, not that I ever really thought it was, but even less so now. And, um, I used to be a bit more tendency to, 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 to at least try to, uh, deal with people, religious people specifically, 
on individual terms just you know because I I hate religion coming in between what otherwise would be a really good friendship but I don't do that anymore because I just assume it's gonna it's gonna screw it up because it always always has always always has uh, I, I've gotten harder too I have gotten uh, a lot less forgiving. That's maybe not a good thing, but uh, I think it's developed in self-defense of my own emotional and uh, my own emotional well-being. I have become harder as a person as far as uh, I don't molly coddle I think is what I'm trying to say I don't do uh, I treat everybody the same I don't care if you're this young you know you're if you're five years old or if you're 105 years old you know uh, um, I don't Mitz words about anything. You know, I used to be try to be a little more tactful. It's never been my strong point anyway, but uh, not anymore because it just seems to go right over, you know, people just assume you're being when you're tactful, it's at least this has been my experience. When you are tactful with people, they just tend to ignore you. And I have found being very blunt and plain spoken and brutally honest even um, tends to get shit done a lot quicker than being tactful and trying to play by their freaking little rules which they don't want to play by. And um, so, um, well I guess some people would tell you I've become a bit more of a bitch as a result of this uh, you know like I said you know I you know I'm not you know I never intentionally do anything to be mean or uh, anything of that sort you know I, I don't like it you know but I don't like uh, definitely not passive aggressive I absolutely hate that and um, it's it's caused a lot of pain too and that has been a lot harder for me to deal with and that's what's caused me to become a little bit more harder you know and more less likely to let um, I guess a little bit less likely to let too many get too close. I just don't have as much tendency to let people in as I used to. Because until they can prove themselves trustworthy, I'm leery anymore. Because there's been too much, too soon, and it's came too fast. And, uh,. I can't say I like some of, in some of the ways that I've changed over the past year, but it is what it is, and our life experiences make us who we are, you know, and it is, it just, it either, it either breaks you or you toughen up, and, um, I have watched many friends that we have made over the last year. Um, I've watched it take a toll on them. I've watched it take a toll on my hubby. I've watched it take a toll on those who used to believe so much and try so hard to stay 
open-minded and positive with uh, everybody, including the religious folks, and then they found they can't do that anymore. They can't. You know, you can't. There's just some people you cannot um, compromise with, negotiate with. And I realize I am a lot less likely to compromise about a lot of stuff anymore because you cannot compromise your integrity. You cannot compromise your... Um, self what's the word I'm looking for here you can't compromise your belief or, you know you cannot compromise your stand on things when it comes to what's right it really is and when you absolutely know that the other side is just flat out wrong you know you don't compromise with that you don't compromise with them you don't compromise with thugs and terrorists and uh, people who would just as soon see you wiped off the face of the planet. You don't compromise. You know, I used to be a lot more, have a lot more tendency to compromise on things. Not anymore. You know, I have grown to definitely reserve my judgment and my own counsel on that. And um, so, you know, I, in some ways it's made me stronger. It has. It, it's made me tougher. And uh, even more or less likely to put up with bullshit. But um, it's... I only I don't know if I smile as much as I used to either after all of this because I have seen when I woke up and looked around and saw the ugliness because I always 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 tried to see the beauty and that's been harder to do that I don't like and a lot, I mean, if I didn't even know I could get any more angry than I had already ever been. But I have become so angry with this whole shit show over the last year to the point that I, I wouldn't bat an eye if somebody was to come and tell me that 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 all these people who've been causing so much trouble and so much grief and pain that they had just been you know I don't know drop dead if they I wouldn't care I'd be like good you know and that's that I don't think I like too much because I used at least to have some feel that it was sad when death hit anybody, you know, particularly for the families. But now I'm just like, well, good. One less asshole in the world, you know. One less person that, that could come out here and kill my friends. One less person that... It is is spewing their hatred and vitriol all in the name of their religion, or whatever. You know, it's been hard. It's just been extremely hard. And there are times when I wish I had ran the other way, but that's just not in me to do. You know, I spent too many years with my head up my ass pretending like nothing was happening and. I can't do that anymore. You know, I really don't know where it's all going to go from here. I don't know uh, how this is going to continue to affect my, me 
in the course of years time. But I do know that I will continue to um you know be an advocate for inclusiveness. Try for as long as I am living in this community, try to make this a better place for everybody to live, whether they want it or not. And um, you know, and I, I, I really, from this point, I really don't know. You know, it, it's, it's, um, it's anybody's guess <laughs> how it's going to affect me from here. Well, I'd like to thank you once again for taking the time to meet with us today and sharing your thoughts. Well, thanks for you know having me. Most people <laughs> don't really seem to be interested in my thoughts so much of anything, because <laughs> you know I'm I'm a nobody, dude. I'm a nobody, but I am one of these people. I will be your fiercest, fiercest friend to the better fucking end, or I'll be your most fiercest, fiercest enemy, and that's pretty much anybody's choice what they want on that so you know <laughs> all right well thanks again thank you